Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last module 4.1 we provided an interlude where we summarized the computational problems arising from the formulation of the least square problems linear nonlinear etc. And we also indicated some of the methods the two pathways one by matrix methods another by direct minimization. So, in this module 2 we are going to take up the methods of matrix decomposition or matrix methods. Most of the mythic methods are decomposition based te techniques. We are going to primarily talking about three decomposition techniques Cholesky decomposition, a QR decomposition and SVD. We are going to look at the details of how these are organized. Matrix methods for solving A x is equal to B. We are interested in solving a specific problem of A x is equal to B. So, in our case we are interested in solving A x is equal to B A is S P D that is what we are interested in. But before I get little deeper into solving systems with symmetric positive matrices I would like to provide a broader overview of the available classes of methods one can use to solve the matrix system. One is called direct method another is called the treaty methods this is this is within the matrix methodology. The direct methods they rely on what is called multiplicative decomposition of A. These methods have in general a complexity of n cube. These methods give exact result when there is no round of errors in the computers. In this class we are going to be looking at two uh, three different classes of methods LU, QR and SVD. LU is the forerunner of all the others. So, I am going to start with basic LU then QR then SVD. Multiplicative decomposition of matrices very similar to multiplicative decomposition of integers. If I have an integer n which is given any positive integer n there is a fundamental theorem that, that says I can express it as the product of powers of prime that is called prime decomposition. Prime decomposition is a multiplicative decomposition within the context of integers. For example, if you have the number 25, 25 is equal to 5 square which is the square of the prime. If I have the number 24 on the other hand I could express this as 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 4 times 6, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So, this could be 2 cube times 3, 2 is a prime, 3 is a prime. So, this is called the prime decomposition. So, much like any positive integer can be decomposed into product of powers of prime, given a matrix, given a non singular matrix, I can also express it as product. Deco product decomposition or multiplicative decomposition. So, what we have been used to doing in numbers I would like to be able to translate it to matrices and that is what these three decomposition methods all entail. These decomposition generally belong to the multiplicative class, but the details of the derivation of the factors differ because the properties of factors differ. On the other hand the system like A x is equal to B can all be can also be solved by iterative techniques. The iterative methods rely on what is called additive decomposition of A. This iterative methods in order to be able to make it operative we have to indulge in what are called convergence proofs we have to show the method iteratively converges to the solution I am seeking. In any iterative methods one has to be content with what is called the, the derivation of the rate of convergence. Is, is one thing to prove that the iterative method converges another thing to find out what is the rate at which it converges to the optimum. The complexity 
of this method depends on cost per iteration and the desired accuracy as opposed to the fixed cost for the direct methods which are all of the type O of n cube. What is O of n cube? If A is the matrix of size n by n the total amount of work to be done in solving the system A x is equal to B is uh, 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 takes a total of, of the order of n cube operation. For example, if n is equal to a million, a million size problem is very routine in geophysical domain. If I am interested in solving a static inverse problem, I convert the static inverse problem to one of solving a linear system A x is equal to B. So, A is a matrix of size 10 to the power of 6. The total amount of work to total amount of basic operation basic operations are addition multiplication subtraction division that the computer has to perform to be able to generate is of the order of 10 to the power of 6 cube which is equal to 10 to the power 18. 10 to the power of 18 operations is 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 large amount of work and that is going to take quite a long of long time. We will try to provide an estimate of how long does it take to be able to solve a million by million system as we go by. But at this stage I would like to be able to uh, concentrate on two mutually exclusive classes of algorithm. One depends on multiplicative decomposition other de depends on additive decomposition. There is also an analogy with respect to integers additive decomposition. For example, if I have number 4 I can express it as 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. I can express it as 2 plus 1 plus 1, I can express it as 3 plus 1. So, these are different ways of expressing 4 additively. So, these are called additive decomposition much like I can express numbers additively, I should also be able to express matrices additively. So, multiplicative decomposition of numbers, additive decomposition of numbers likewise for matrices these two methods depends on our ability to decompose matrices multiplicatively and additively. Some of the methods of the iterative type are called Jacobi method, Gauss Seidel method, successive over relaxation methods. These iterative methods are easy to program. The total cost depends on how much it takes for you to be able to perform one iterative step. The number of iterative step depends on the total desired accuracy. So, these two methods are two competing methods one can utilize to be able to develop program systems for doing data simulation. The LU decomposition method that is our first one I am going to concentrate on some of the major aspects of LU decomposition. It is derived from the classical Gaussian elimination methods that we are all introduced to in the first course in algebra to solve a 2 by 2 system. What do you, how do we solve a 2 by 2 system in, 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 in when we learn algebra? I have A x plus B y is equal to F 1, C x plus D y is equal to F of 2. How do we do that? We eliminate x in one of the equations. So, by multiplying the first equation by minus a by c, we can make the first equation to be minus c minus a b times c y uh, 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 equal to minus c times f 1. I have c x plus d y is equal to f 2. Now, I add these two the first two term gets cancelled then I get d minus a b by c times y is equal to f 2 minus a by c f 1 by dividing I can get y. Once I get y I can substitute one of these equations and recover x. This is called the method of elimination and please remember Gauss was the one who invented this method. Please realize now Gauss's fundamental in, in inventions he, he developed the Gaussian distribution to be able to describe observational error errors. He developed the least square methodology to be able to solve the problem in astronomy. He also invented this method of 
elimination to be able to solve linear system we are cognizantly otherwise we use many of the uh, um, results of Gauss routinely in all our work. So, this is the method of Gaussian elimination. This method of Gaussian elimination when written in the matrix formulation can be shown to be equivalent to LU decomposition. So, what is LU decomposition? Given a matrix A I can express this as a product. So, this is where the multiplicative decomposition comes in as a product of two matrices where L is a lower triangular matrix and U is an upper triangular matrix. What is the lower triangular matrix? In a lower triangular matrix this is non zero everything above is zero. In upper triangular matrix everything below is zero. Therefore, given any matrix I can express it as a product of two matrices with special structures the structure lower triangular the structure upper triangular. So, there is a general theorem given any non singular matrix it can be expressed as the product of L and U where L is lower triangular U is upper triangular. And this decomposition is mathematically equivalent to the Gaussian elimination method we generally use we are generally you have introduced when we first develop tools in algebra. I am not going to show that it can be done now I am going to approach it using a constructive procedure. One way would be to show such an L and U given A exists another way would be I am not going to worry about existence I will simply actually deliver it that will solve the equation A is equal to L, um, um, L times U. So, A is given let this th th let this be the L matrix that let, let that be the U matrix I am sorry this must be this must be u instead of a. So, I am assuming a particular structure for L I am assuming a particular structure for u. If you compute the total number of unknowns in the L matrix they are all below the diagonal. If you compute the total number of unknowns in the u matrix anything on and above the diagonal. So, the L matrix has a total of n times n minus 1 by 2 unknowns the u matrix has n times n plus 1 by 2 unknowns these two together consist of a total of n square unknowns. So, to be able to compute L and u is equivalent to given the a elements I have to compute the L elements and the u elements. So, if I multiply these two equate uh, these two matrices on the right hand side I am going to get expressions as the product of L and u. I am going to have to equate them to A's. There are n square elements in the left hand matrix, there are n square elements in the right hand product matrix. By equating the two, I am going to get n square equations in n square unknowns. By solving these n square unknowns, I am going to uncover the elements of L and U. They uncover the elements of L and U. So, that is the general idea of, 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 of this methodology. But before I go further I would like to talk a little bit about the structure. In the case of u matrices I assume the diagonal to be arbitrary u1 one, u1 one, one, u2 two, 2 but I assumed the L to be fixed um, u1 one, 1 1 1. I am going to argue suppose I make this L 1 1 I suppose I make this also L 1 1 L 2 2 L n n the total number of unknowns in the L matrix and the U matrix will be n times n plus 1 by 2 the total number of unknowns will be larger than n square, but there are only n square equations. Now, please realize how we got here I started with the under determinant system or over determinant system I converted into a linear system x is equal to b to solve the linear system I again cannot go back to an over determinant system under determinant system it becomes circular. So, I have to have a determinant system it turns out without lots of generality I can assume the diagonal factors of L they are all unity they are all unity. So, this is one way of being able to enforce uh, uh, solvability. So, there are n square equations there are n square unknowns we will illustrate this idea by a very simple example. 
suppose I am given so I am I am now going to take an example of a symmetric matrix in general the above decomposition holds good for any matrix but for reasons that we are interested in symmetric matrix I am going to start with the simple symmetric matrix let A be the symmetric matrix let L be this U be this L and U follow the conditions that we have already stated if you multiply L and U I get a matrix which is given by this now I have to equate U11 so from here you already get U11 is equal to 1 you also get U12 is equal to 3 by 2 now you now have L21 U11 is equal to 3 by 2 but I already know U11 is 1 therefore L21 also becomes uh, uh, L21 becomes 3 by 2. Now if you consider the equation the last equation L21 U12 plus U22 is equal to 1 half I already know L21 I already know U12 I already know the right hand side is half. So, using that I can determine U22. So, in this particular way I have determined L is given by this U is given by this. So, now look at this now once U11 is known I can compute L21. One U12 is known I can compute U22. So, there is a particular structure with which we can uncover the unknown elements. This structure is embodied in the LU decomposition algorithm I am providing a pseudo code I am sure you can read this pseudo code I do not think I need to I want to repeat the instructions in the pseudo code you can readily see there is a for loop there is a for loop and there is one loop another loop at the same level there is a third loop which I did not write in but there is an intrinsic third loop there is a summation there is a summation you cannot simply write in a computer programming sum you have to write it as a do loop. So, you can see there is a triple nested do loop there is a triple nested do loop when there is a triple nested do loop the overall cost is n cube that is where the total cost of n cube comes into play. It can be verified that the total um, number of operations to be performed is the order of n cube and I would like I would leave it to you to, to, to verify this for example in this particular case I am going to have to run r j, j is equal to 1 to r minus 1 it is summation but before I sum I have to multiply. So, there are r minus 1 multiply that will give me r minus 1 numbers then I have to add them all to add 2 numbers I have to make 1 add, add, addition add numbers I have to make 2 additions to add r minus 1 numbers I have to perform r minus 2 additions and I have to perform one more addition subtraction subtraction and addition are essentially the same therefore this particular step is going to require r minus 1 plus r minus 2 plus 1 that is going to be equal to 2 times r minus 1 operations. But r runs from 1 to n therefore this particular do loop alone is going to now require 2 times r minus 1 r runs from 1 to n r runs from 1 to n I am sorry uh, I would like to uh, uh, I would like to revisit this issue once again um, again that is correct good and this is uh, this one is embedded in in this do loop if it is under embedded in this do loop this is repeated r running from 1 to n sorry that repeated r running from 1 to n r to n is n minus r. So, this has to be done n minus r times where r changing. So, likewise you can compute the operations in here then you have to compute the operations overall. So, if you add up all these expressions you can verify the total amount of operation is the order of n cube and I would like to leave this as a homework problem for you to compute please do and convince yourself that to solve any LU decomposition problem it requires n cube operations. 
Now the question is this once I have computed the L and U how what do I do with it so let us go back A is equal to L U A is equal to L U therefore A X is equal to L U X L U X can be written as L times U of X. Now I can write U of X is equal to G if U of X is equal to G then this becomes L G is equal to B. So, A x is equal to B reduces to L g is equal to B and then to uncover x I have to solve U x is equal to G. Therefore, the L u decomposition framework essentially gives you first decompose A is equal to L u. Then you have been given see you have been given A and B use A find L and u. Then using the L you found in the previous step and the B solve for G solve a lower triangular system. You already know U you already know G from the previous step solve U X is equal to X. So, that is how you solve in 3 steps L U decomposition step solution of lower triangular system solution of upper, upper triangular system these 3 together constitute the method of L U decomposition and this method is applicable to any matrix so long as A is non singular. So, this is the mother of all direct methods LU decomposition the basis this is it is from here all the other methods start. Now, I am going to talk about method of solving the lower triangular system. So, please remember LU decomposition algorithm we have already seen how to decompose please remember we have already seen how to decompose I have given a pseudo code. Now, I want to be able to solve a lower triangular system, but before I go further I want to tell solving a lower triangular system and solving a low upper triangular system are essentially similar mathematically why is that the transpose of a lower triangle is upper triangular and transpose of upper triangle is lower triangular. Therefore, I could once I know how to solve a lower triangular system I also know how to solve an upper triangular system. So, I do not have to deal with these separately. So, suffice to say that I would like to be able to solve a lower triangular system. So, L 1 1 0 0 L 2 1 L 2 2 0 0 G 1 G 2 G n B 1 B 2 B n I can recover please remember from the first equation I, I can recover G 1 then for I running from 2 to n I can recover any of the other G i's by this simple formula. So, using this loop and another embedded loop for the summation I can essentially solve the system it can again be verified the total operation that is required is only y n square. Please remember L u requires y n cube, but solving a lower triangle system is much cheaper is only y n square n square does not grow as fast as n cube therefore, solving lower triangle system is much cheaper. For sake of completeness I am also giving you an algorithm for upper triangular system this is a typical upper triangular system x we computed g from the previous cases. So, I can recover x n first I can compute x n first. So, x n is given by this then x n minus 1 to 1 I am I'm, I'm sorry this must be 1 that is a typo. So, I could be able to recover all the x i's by using what is called back substitution this method is called back substitution. So, by using a method of back substitution I have a formula which is very similar to a do loop that is another embedded do loop because of the summation sign. So, these two together requires y n square operations. So, in summary if I have if I am going to solve A x is equal to B if I am going to solve A x is equal to B A x is equal to B using L u decomposition the L u decomposition steps n cube lower triangle system takes n square upper triangle system takes n square of all the 3 O n cube is the dominant term. So, the total cost is the order of n cube that is where the whole thing comes into play we can actually compute these are all actually polynomials in n you can actually compute the actual polynomial that gives you the, the amount of work and that is the homework problem I am leaving it to the reader to fill up. So, this should this essentially provides you I have provided the pseudo code for both the LUD composition lower triangle upper triangular. So, you have a code you can code it in your favorite language 
C, C++, Fortran, MATLAB, whatever it is. In fact, MATLAB has excellent programs written. While you may use readily MATLAB programs, I think it is better to understand the intelligence behind how MATLAB solves the problem it does to be able to have a total understanding of the of the uh, uh, programs that you may develop. In fact, if you are trying to develop a data simulation system for work in operational centers, they generally do not depend on anybody they try to code everything ground up because they will have total control over how things are happening. So, in such cases if you are interested in developing large scale systems one need to know the nuts and bolts of how these algorithms are implemented to solve the least square problems. Now, I am going to give you an indication of the time involved. I think this, this will be a very interactive exercise. Let us assume n is a million n cube is equal to 10 to the power of 8 operations. I had to perform these operations in a machine. Let us pretend I have the best machine money can buy. So, I have a machine that takes 10 to the power of 12 seconds per operation. Such a machine is called teraflop machines. I want to quickly add there are not too many teraflop machines on the, on the, on the face of the earth right now. These are some they all talk about petaflop machine. Petaflop machine is 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 each operation takes 10 to the power of minus 15, but over the across the world there are only 4, 5, 6 petaflop machines at very special places. Teraflop machines are much more popular. So, a teraflop machine let us pretend we have access to that. So, if each operation takes 10 to the power of minus 12 seconds, I have to perform 10 to the power of 18 operations. So, I would like to uh, so it, it would take 10 to the power of 6 seconds to solve the problem 10 to the power of 6 seconds is a million seconds. Now, let me estimate how much is a million second. In a day there are 60 seconds in a minute there are 60 minutes in an hour there are 24 hours a day there are 365 days in a year ordinary year excluding the leap years. So, there are only roughly this is 31 not 32 this is 31 there are roughly 31.5 million seconds in one year. So, I want 10 to the power of 6 seconds there are only 31.5 times 10 to the power of 6 seconds in a year. So, how many years or how many days does it take? So, this is the total amount of seconds 60 seconds in an hour 60 I am sorry 60 seconds in a minute 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours. So, 10 to the power of 6 divided by this many hours. So, I am sorry there are 6 let me let me start all over again there are 60 seconds in a minute there are 60 minutes in an hour there are 24 hours a day. So, this fraction gives you the total number of days to complete 10 to the power of 6 operation uh, 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 all, all the operation 10 to the power of 18 operations on this machine and that is equal to 11.57 days to solve a x is equal to b if n is a million. This is conditioned on conditioned of the fact that I have a teraflop machines. If you do not have a teraflop machine the story is much different. Now, I want to ask us a, a, a following hypothetical question would you wait for 11 and a half days to solve one problem that is totally impractical. We have to create forecast especially in the meteorological context in atmospheric science every 24 hours. In order to be able to make a forecast every 24 hours the data assimilation person may not get more than 5 hours, 6 hours, 4 hours. So, observations have to be collected, observations have to be made ready, the models have to be run, the data assimilation part has to be established. Once the data assimilation part is done inverse problems are solved then one has to generate forecast. Here what we are talking about is solving one part of the data simulation problem namely to solve the x is equal to b is going to take of the order of 11 and a half days. So, now you can see the monster the monster is not because we do not know how to solve the problem we know how to solve the problem exactly the monster is nature of the problem because it comes from the size of the problem sheer size 10 to the power of 6. If you talk to meteorologists if you talk to oceanographers 10 to the power of 6 is not all that big they would like to be able to refine the grid much 
uh, smaller grid resolutions. So, if you want to be able to improve the accuracy and predictions of the model on one hand you have to reduce the grid spacing reducing the grid spacing increase the size if I increase the size the problem becomes larger if the problem becomes larger my computers are not enough to be able to solve the problem in a time that is allowed for me to be able to generate prediction. So, this is the dilemma that are faced world over by all the meteorological operation research centers. So, what is the solution what is the way out one way would be to reduce the size of the problem when to reduce the size of the problem means what you make the problem coarse if you make the problem coarse there are more model errors or you buy the best machine money can buy but there are no machines faster than petaf uh, flop these days so these kinds of problems provide impetus for the growth of ever faster computers Terra to peta to exa flop machines. So, until faster machines faster and faster machines come into being we may have to content ourselves solving only a smaller sized problem because of the constraint of time within which we are allowed to operate. So, that is the end result of these uh, of this analysis the computational analysis. But when A is the metric Uh, now, I am going to go over to having discussed the solution of Ax is equal to b for a general matrix. Now, I would like to transcend slowly to the case of the matrix that we are interested in. I would like to be able to solve Ax is equal to b when A is symmetric general to symmetric from symmetric to positive definite. So, that is the, the stage we are going to utilize. So, if the matrix is symmetric now, I am going to concoct a diagonal matrix with the diagonal elements of u as a diagonal matrix d. In that case, I should be able to express u as the product of d and dm. In this case, it can be easily verified as a simple matrix calculation. Uh, a m is a matrix whose diagonals are all 1. So, I should be able to use this in my LU decomposition to express A is equal to L D M. L is a lower triangular matrix with all 1s along the diagonal. M is an upper triangular matrix with all 1 along the diagonal. D is a diagonal matrix whose diagonal elements were part of U. I have separated that is a further decomposition uh, um, here. Now, if A is symmetric it can be verified m is l transpose m and l are not distinct therefore i should be able to express a as l d l transpose decomposition so this is a special form of the deco lu decomposition that a takes when a is symmetric so in this case if i compute l i don't in the case of lu i have to compute l and u separately because l is not equal to u but in this case u has been replaced by d l transpose if I compute l I already know l transpose so, so half the work is saved. So, all I need to do is compute l and compute d. So, when the matrix A is symmetric I am saving a ton of money by not having to compute 2 matrices because of this simple form A is equal to l d l transpose. Again I am going to give you a simple example. A is a symmetric matrix it is instructive to go through these simple examples. I have already shown L u is given by this my u elements are are 1 and 5 by 4. So, u can be expressed as L this u can be expressed as L m this is d this is m. So, m is given by this and m and L are essentially transposes of each other since A is symmetric and 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 D the, the diagonal elements of D are positive. If the diagonal elements are D are positive I can take what is called the square root of D the square root of D I can express this as the square root of a matrix square root of a diagonal matrix is simply a matrix whose element whose diagonal elements are square root of the corresponding diagonal elements. So, the diagonal elements are 1 square root of 1 is 1 square root of 5 by 4 is square root of 5 by 2 
So, this is the square root matrix square root matrix. Um, so, I can express d as d to the power half times d to the power half much like I can express any number a as square root of a times square root of a. So, what is that I have now done? I have identified L, I have identified U, I have identified D, I have identified M, I have shown M is L transpose. Further I took the square root of D, D can be expressed as D to the power half, D to the power half the power of the square root, the, I am sorry the product of the square roots. Therefore, A can be replaced by L D to the power of half, D to the power of half L transpose. I can combine these two parts I can combine these two parts. So, this part is essentially L d to the power half I am sorry I, I, I would like to write it clearly. This part is essentially L d to the power half this part is d to the power half L transpose d to the power of half L transpose. So, this element is L d to the power half this element is d to the power half L transpose I am sorry L transpose I am going to call this as G I am going to call this as G transpose therefore, this A is equal to G G transpose. Now, look at this now this is called the Cholesky factor this is called the Cholesky decomposition A is equal to G G transpose where G is called the Cholesky factor and I have shown you through the using this example how to compute the Cholesky factor. So, in the case of Cholesky factor there is no L there is no U there is only G G. So, once you find G I compute G transpose very readily. So, they are essentially the amount of work is reduced to half therefore, Cholesky decomposition the cost of it is about half of what it takes for LU decomposition. Of course, for large problems even this is going to be large, but we are trying to see how various decomposition methods are related to each other. So, we have talked about. So, I am now going to uh, uh, summarize the whole thing. So, so, let A be a positive definite matrix A be a positive definite matrix the diagonal elements of D are positive. If the diagonal elements of D are positive I can afford to take the square root in that case I can express D is equal to D to the power of half times D to the power of half. So, L D L becomes L D to the power of half D to the power of half L transpose which I can associate as the product of L D to the power of half L D to the power of half transpose you can readily see the transpose of the diagonal is the same. So, I am I can now define G is equal to L D to the power of half that is called the Cholesky factor in which case A becomes G G transpose. So, that is called the Cholesky decomposition. The diagonal elements are given by u 1 1 to the power half u 2 2 power half u n n to the power half and that is the square root of the diagonal matrix. In some circles the matrix G that we compute they also call it a square root of A. So, if I can talk about square root of a diagonal matrix if I can talk about a square root of a number I should also be able to talk about a square root of a matrix but here comes the difference. When you take numbers square root of a positive number. So, a if a is equal to phi square root of phi if a if I consider a minus phi square root of minus phi is complex numbers. So, square root operation if you want to remain within the real world square root is defined only for positive numbers. Likewise, if you want to be able to define square roots of matrices the matrices have to be positive definite. So, square root of a positive number square root of a positive definite matrix Cholesky factor Cholesky factor also being called the square root of A. So, if I say A is equal to G G transpose I call G Cholesky factor I call G the square root of A both the names simultaneously apply Dif different people use different characterizations for G, but, but the end result is this is a multiplicative decomposition. I am now expressing the computation of G in the form of a pseudo code again you can readily follow 
you can readily follow. The only difference between LU decomposition and Cholesky decomposition is that in LU decomposition there is no square root operation. In the case of Cholesky uh, there is a square root operation. Square root operations are tricky. Square root is not a basic operation to be able to take a square root of a given number it may take a lot more uh, time. So, this is called Cholesky decomposition with square root operation. So, I have to be able to perform addition, multiplication, subtraction, division and square root. So, if I consider that um, we still need to do n to the o, o, o of n cube operations, but the leading coefficients of the polynomial that represent the amount of work is about one half of that required for LED decomposition. Therefore, Cholesky decomposition of symmetric positive different matrices are cheaper than LU decomposition for any general matrix. So, now I am going to talk about the framework. The, the in this this is framework I think I do not think that is uh, uh, there is a L there. So, let us be a SPD G is equal to G G transpose A x is equal to G G transpose x G times G transpose x I am going to call G transpose x as y. So, G y is equal to b. So, given this framework I have a 3 step algorithm compute G then solve the lower triangular system G b is equal G g is equal to b and then solve an upper triangular system G, g transpose x is equal to g. So, you can see the second step depends on the first step the third step depends on the first step and the second step. So, we solve the system in again a 3 step procedure quite parallel to the LED decomposition, but at a lesser cost. The total cost of lower triangular system is n square the upper triangular system n square this is n cube the overall cost is still n cube, but with a smaller coefficient for the leading term. So, it is slightly cheaper. So, if you look into MATLAB for solving normal equations if you apply Cholesky decomposition. So, what is that that is one has to do one has to do the following you have h you compute h transpose h you call it a then you split a is equal to g g transpose once g g transpose is computed you can use the lower triangle system upper triangle system to solve the resulting linear least square problems. This method of solving the linear least square problem using Cholesky decomposition is a fundamental and a basic tool and that method has come to be called method of normal equations method of normal equations. Method of normal equations. So, we have this provides you the algorithmic setup by which we can solve the 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 the, the linear systems that the lean, uh, li, linear least square problem gives rise to in our in our analysis. So, I am going to summarize the method of normal equations. Let H be a full rank matrix. So, this is the overall summary. Let H be a full rank matrix, compute H H transpose that is going to take an operation n m square compute h transpose z that is going to take n m operations compute the Cholesky factors of g that is going to take n cube operations solve the resulting lower triangle system n square solve the upper triangle system n square. So, you get to solve you get to solve the overall solution for the linear least square problem this is for the over determined system for under determined system we can sim we can again solve by the same procedure that is involved in here. So, with this we have completed the com uh, we have provided a complete story starting with the formulation of the linear least square problem by converting into minimizing the square of the sum of the residual computing the gradient equating the gradient to 0 leading to solution of symmetric positive different system and a given symmetric positive different system can be solved by Cholesky. So, we have provided a complete path from formulation to analysis to algorithms to computational complexity to pseudo program and be able to deliver the result. So, this is the pathway 
to be a complete pathway that that is exactly what happens when they say I have developed a data simulation system for use in practical applications. I would like to now uh, take a few minutes to be able to discuss the notion of square roots of a matrix. Square root of a number we know, square root of a positive number is real, square root of a negative number is complex. In the case of matrices there are three possible ways to define the concept of a square root mathematically consistent way. One is by Cholesky factor that is one way. Please understand these definitions are man made you can define anything you want so long as you are consistent. So, it looks as though it is a is equal to g square even though g g transpose comes in you can think of g transpose you can if you forget transpose for a moment it looks like g is equal to a is equal to g times g. So, g square so g is a square root of a in that sense Cholesky factor defines a square root. Secondly we can express a as a product of a symmetric matrix x times symmetric matrix. So, a is equal to x s square you can parameterize the elements of s you can equate the elements of s square with a and solve for the elements of s and that is also possible mathematically even though I am not going to show the procedure. The procedure is not too different from the LU decomposition there we assume the elements of l and elements of u are unknown here I am going to assume the elements of s are unknown once the elements of s are unknown you multiply s square the elements of s square are functions of the elements of s element you equate the corresponding elements you solve for the elements of s you get what is called symmetric square root. So, what is the difference between the Cholesky square root and the symmetric square root in the case of Cholesky the square root is a lower triangular matrix g is a square root lower triangular matrix. In the case of symmetric matrix s is a full matrix it does not have any special structure, but it is a symmetric square root s is a symmetric matrix we require it to be a symmetric matrix it has an upper half it has a lower half essentially they are the same because a symmetric symmetric square root. So, I can compute the symmetric square root that is another way to define a third kind of square root also comes from eigen decomposition from the module on on, on matrices we have already seen any matrix can be expressed the pro, can 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 be expressed as the product of v lambda v transpose this is called eigen decomposition we are assuming a is SPD any SPD using eigenvalue decomposition can be expressed this way that is called eigen decomposition. I can comp so v lambda v transpose is equal to v lambda to the power half lambda to the power half v transpose this is equal to v lambda to the power half times v lambda to the power half transpose that is equal to v bar v bar transpose that is what we have. So, here again looks like the Cholesky factors. So, v bar is considered to be a square root of a. So, this square root is given by the eigen decomposition. So, now if you say a square root of a matrix there are three different ways of computing square roots you have to essentially specify the method by which you compute the square root. In data simulation the Cholesky based square root as well as the Eigen decomposition based square roots are very popular we seldom use the symmetric square root, but it is mathematically possible. So, from square root of a number to a square root of a matrix Cholesky decomposition square root of matrices different ways of defining square roots in a consistent way and we can utilize these square roots to our benefit when we do analysis with respect to matrix algorithms. So, that is a summary of that is a summary of one class of matrix techniques that is based on Cholesky decomposition which is essentially derived from LU decomposition. Now, I would like to slowly move into the next uh, uh, decomposition method that is called the QR decomposition for that I need to have some preliminaries. So, I am going to recall some of the definitions for matrix theory. 
let A be a matrix of size n by n we say A as a matrix is an orthogonal matrix if the inverse is transpose that means A transpose A or A, A transpose is identity. These orthogonal matrices are very powerful and they have very special property. One property of orthogonal matrix we are going to illustrate here. So, let A be orthogonal matrix let x be any vector if you multiply a vector by a matrix I get another vector. So, y is a vector which is an orthogonal transformation of the vector x using the orthogonal matrix A. I want to be able to compute the square of the norm that the square of the 2 norm of y the square of the 2 norm of y is square of the 2 norm of A x the 2 norm by definition is A x transpose times A x A x transpose is x transpose A transpose A times x A transpose A if A is orthogonal is identity is equal to x transpose x which is equal to square of the norm of x. So, look at this now I start with a I start with a vector y I linearly transform y to A these two vectors happen to have the same length that means what does it mean this means that 2 norm is invariant under orthogonal transformation. So, what does this imply if two vectors have the same norm means they lie on the same circle with radius norm of x. So, if y is another vector y also lies on the same circle with center as origin radius as norm of x this is equal to norm of y and we, we first saw norm of y is equal to norm of x. So, what does this mean if I have a vector x if I have a vector x if I multiply the vector x by an orthogonal transformation the orthogonal transformation simply rotates it without elongating it without shrinking it. The length remains the same it simply rotates it. So, y is simply a rotation of x that is the fundamental property that I would like to be able to emphasize at this moment the 2 norm is invariant under orthogonal transformation. This is going to be very useful in the development of QR algorithms. So, QR decomposition algorithm I am also going to consider the case when m is greater than n for simplicity. So, let h be a matrix well let h be a matrix or a man then there is a fundamental theorem that says there exists an orthogonal matrix Q and an upper triangular matrix R such that H is equal to Q R Q Q transpose Q transpose Q is I M that because it is an orthogonal matrix R is an upper triangular matrix. So, I am going to express that in notation this is the matrix H this is the matrix Q this is the matrix R, R is upper triangular, H is M by N, Q is M by M and R is M by N. So, R is a rectangular matrix, um, uh, H is a rectangular matrix, but Q is a square matrix. So, this is called full QR decomposition. Now, look at that now. LU decomposition is for square matrices, A is equal to LU. QR decomposition applies to even general matrices namely rectangular matrices. So, it is much more powerful it is a generalization of sorts in one way. So, what is the idea why to form so you start with H you compute H transpose H and then decompose why do you create A and then decompose why not you decompose H itself directly that is the idea H is the M by N matrix. So, this M by N matrix can be expressed as the product of two matrices with special structures this is orthogonal that is upper triangular. Orthogonal matrix have special properties upper triangular matrices are very simple matrices structurally simpler matrices. What do I mean by saying orthogonal matrices in an orthogonal matrix the columns of Q are orthonormal vectors. What do you mean by orthonormal the length of each vector is 1 if I pick any two vectors and do an inner product that is 0 that means any two columns are mutually orthogonal every vector is of length 1 such a collection of vectors is called 
orthonormal vectors. So, this is a very special form of decomposition. It is also generalization of the LU decomposition. So, there are lots of beautiful properties from going from LU to Cholesky to QR. Now, I would like to go back. M is larger than N. So, this is an over determined system M is larger than M. M yeah, M is la sorry. M is larger than N. So there are M rows. I'm going to cut it at N rows. So this is this is N. This is M minus N. So if I'm going to partition the R like this, I should be able to partition the Q also like this. N. I'm going to have to this is m minus n. So this part with the n columns, I'm going to call it q1. This part with the n uh, the m minus n columns, I'm going to call it q2. So q1, q2 is a partition of is a partition of q. R and zero are partitions. So, so this lower part is essentially a zero matrix. Therefore, I can I can partition q as q1 q2 but q is the first n columns of q here the rest of the n minus n columns of q as we shown in the previous slide r2 is all symmetric uh, is, is all zero matrix r1 is the first r um, um, n by n is the first n rows of r i'm sorry first n rows of r Therefore, I can express H is equal to QR, Q is equal to Q1, Q2, R1, R2. R, so, this is equal to Q1, R1 plus Q2, R2, but R2 is 0. Therefore, H is equal to Q1, R1. So, H is equal to Q1, R1. This is called reduced QR decomposition. I do not have to build those too many columns, too many zeros. And here, the property of Q1 is that Q1 transpose Q1 is IN. So, that is the property of the sub matrix q1. So, q1 is a matrix is a rectangular matrix it has m rows and, and n columns and q1 transpose q1 is in. So, full so let me go back here um, uh, this is called the full qr decomposition in, in, in slide 20 this is called a reduced qr decomposition in slide 21. Now, let us see how I can utilize this in my least square problems. Please go back. My R of x. Please go back. My R of x is equal to z minus h of x. That is a residual. My f of x is equal to the square of the norm of the residual. We already know that. We also know that the norm of a vector remains invariant under an orthogonal transformation. We saw this in the to, to start with. Columns of Q are orthogonal, so I can express this as Q transpose R of x. So, R of x is equal to Q transpose R of x that, that is essentially an orthogonal transformation of the residual vector. If I multiply if I substitute R of x is equal to Z of x in here I get this I can multiply Q transpose Z is equal to Q transpose H of x. But we already know Q is Q1 Q2 Therefore, Q transpose Z is Q1 transpose Q2 transpose Z which is Q1 transpose Z Q2 transpose Z. Q2 transpose H of X is equal to Q transpose Q R of X and that is essentially R of X which is R1 R2 of X which is R1 of X the bottom line is 0 because R2 is 0. So, when I combine these operations my F of X now becomes this F of X is equal to Q1 transpose Z minus r 1 x square plus q 2 z a this is the sum of the square residual. What is the import of this now x is the unknown. So, by changing x I can so uh, my job is to minimize f of x f is a function of x, but the right hand side consists of two terms the second term is independent of x. So, I cannot alter a term if it does not depend on x because x is the free variable here. So, this is the second term is independent of x 
So, it is a, it's, it's a constant term I cannot do anything with that. I can only manipulate the first term. So, I am going to minimize f of x only by minimizing the first term f of x by minimizing only the first term. I hope the argument is clear in here. This decomposition reduces f of x to a sum of two terms one depend on x another does not depend on f x depend on x. I can control only x there is no other control I have. I have to minimize with respect to x. So, if I change x the first term changes second term does not. Therefore, I need to concentrate only on manipulating the first term. Only the first term depends on x this is again a summary of what I already talked about the first term depends on depends on x. The second term does not and the first term is the minimum when does this get to be a minimum this is when the first term is 0. When will the first term is 0 I will have r 1 of x is equal to q 1 transpose z therefore, the least square solution is obtained by solving r 1 x is equal to q 1 transpose z or least square solution is r 1 inverse q 1 transpose z is obtained by solving an upper, upper triangular system. So, by spending money not on Cholesky decomposition of h transpose h, but on decomposing h to be q and r h to be q and r we have now reduced the problem of computing the solution to a linear least square problem to one of solving an upper triangular system. This is a very important development. Please understand solution of a upper triangular system and lower triangular system costs only o of n square. Please go the solution of a upper triangular system or lower triangular system is going to cost only o of n square. But the solution of a full system is going to cost you o of n cube. Therefore, this solution process is much cheaper than solving the normal equations, but what is the catch? The catch is I still have to pay for the QR decomposition. Therefore, this methodology is a very elegant methodology, but it rests on being able to perform the QR decomposition on the matrix H and that is a very fundamental operation. So, the our next step in the development of matrix methods is to utilize uh, uh, the ability to factor h as q times r q is orthogonal and r is upper triangular. If I can make it happen I know r because r is divided into r 1 and r 2 q is divided into q 1 and q 2. So, r 1 is known q 1 is known I can compute the solution of this very easily. So, the everything rests on our ability to do the q r decomposition to which we now turn.